Hi chess friends, this is King's Executor and as you can tell uh, if you know my channel this is a Dutch Leningrad game well if it w uh, wasn't a Staunton Gambit or something like that but it is a uh, Dutch Leningrad um, and it's between Mizo Kebalo and Evgeny Vazyukov both uh, rated 2505 back then in 2006 at the World Senior Championship and Vazyukov is really a uh, proponent of the uh, Dutch playing red he plays a little bit different than uh, my recommendation I think the way to play uh, um, my way to play this uh, op opening is a little bit uh, easier to understand and very effective uh, nevertheless and here we see white angling for the standard anti-dutch system with the fianchetto kingside bishop castling short and these uh, central pawns d6 castles and in this position uh, Vasikov played queen e8 and after d5 he played a5. Let's just drop back to this position after castles by white. I would recommend you to play c6. This blocks these two pieces in there or well it restricts them and uh, it controls central squares uh, indirectly the screen has no check here as well so it's really important to control d5 and what if d5 here well the idea is um, to gain space or to interrupt uh, black's plan because black's plan is simply to play queen e8 uh, e5 and then establish a the nice pawn center here and maybe attacking the king side so white wants to interrupt this and d5 is one of the most uh, uh, popular moves in such positions and how to react uh, to this move e5 is the move and uh, white does best to take en passant and would take with a bishop well you might be worried about this bishop's location due to knight g5 and uh, let's just look at it the bishop for the moment is attacking c4 so queen d3 is a possibility then we put the rook here because after this pawn is gone we rather don't want to move these uh, pawns if it doesn't uh, give us a clear cut advantage so we are not using uh, this file to play but rather the file and if knight g5 we allow white to take the bishop due to this um, light squared pawns it's not that big of a deal for black to lose the bishop pair because meanwhile we occupy this center uh, this central file and we get our pieces out if rook d1 looks scary to you well again this pawn is attacked and uh, this would rather be an exchange of uh, pawns if white takes on d6 you can play queen, um, knight c5 attacking the queen uh, maybe provoking to exchange these pawns takes 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 and then takes on c4 attacking e2 bishop e3 is good in, in this position blocking this attack at least the rook from attacking the pawn and meanwhile gaining a tempo on the knight then we can drop back 
having everything covered on E6 and exchanging further pieces. And uh, in this position white well, can exchange pieces here, you can take back with the rook or with the bishop and now you see we even maintained our bishop pair. In such a position with uh, this fianchettoed bishop you rather don't want to touch these pawns right now. You grab the center, exchange pieces and this will probably end in a draw uh, sooner or later. Well, this is easy, isn't it? Going back to this position after white having castled, Vasyukov, on the other hand, played more complicatedly with queen e8 and after d5, a5. Because, well, the queen looks uh, to the queen side, we are opening up the rook uh, and we can have a knight here and b4 is not possible uh, to kick the knight so this knight uh, will stand probably on a very nice square here and we're stopping uh, white or we're slowing white's queenside pawn march down so a5 is a reasonable move here. Knight d4 was played by Cavallo and knight a6. And now you see black's control of uh, what happened? These squares. Okay, now it works again. And uh, this is really interesting. Knight to d6 is a bad idea. You just take the knight and there is a pawn landing on e6 which is really vulnerable. After that c6 blocking this bishop which uh, looked at b7 but c6 stops that. And then you round up that pawn on c6 with queen to c8. Um, let's just look at it takes takes c6 and uh, well maybe e4 to s try to maintain this pawn but simply takes 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 bishop takes and now look how nice this knight is posted and if uh, queen g4 we can take the bishop or we can play queen c8 and um, well I could try to um, stop uh, black from attacking the pawn but rook e8 rook a e1 and now we can take this in safety and doesn't this uh, central pawn majority look nice? And we're attacking this bishop here. Okay, so as I said, knight e6 would be bad. Uh, knight d6 would be bad. And in this position, white played e4. And um, this pawn can be taken because this square is liberated to occupy it with the bishop takes 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 and bishop d7 for now uh, maybe preparing c6 um, or further connecting these um, rooks here bishop e3 c6 so Vasikov is playing c6 in a different manner he wants now to uh, pressurize the d pawn, maybe even with knight to c7, and uh, to establish a mobile central pawn majority. Queen d2, knight c7, and now this pawn is taken. Rook c1, and c5. 
c5 is logical in a way blocking this pawn so this rook move looks l rather redundant um, of course this bishop now is attacking this rook but we are attacking the knight and indirectly the bishop and then indirectly the queen so white has no time to take the rook on a8 knight b5 this is taken and now um, we stand even with white why playing the Dutch Leningrad as you can tell it's not easy to uh, gain the bishop pair for white uh, like in um, the Nimzo Indian for example or in the French Winawa where you uh, might um, see the bishop pair early on in the game and you f it's really funny black manages to keep uh, the central pawns in many lines as you can tell uh, how is this possible being a tempo down in the opening I think it's possible just l let's drop back from the move f5 this takes away central activity from uh, white and w this is done with a rather uh, offside pawn here and these central pawns come to life later on and with these pawn exchanges here and here later maybe you maintain your uh, pawns okay let's go back to this position this rook was taken and interestingly the queen took this uh, rook let's drop back if this bishop takes this uh, rook queen d5 and uh, well it looks like black is forced to play e6 because this bishop is attacked and when we attack the queen here we only would lose a pawn for it um, so this still um, is not very clear even if white gets to take this pawn we would have bishop b2 and if um, a move like rook e1, queen d3, all bases are covered and we have active major pieces. But this is uh, not the game continuation. Um, this is if we would take the rook here. Vesikov took the bishop and as compensation black has the central dark squares under control he has got central mobile pawns he's got the bishop pair and <coughs> white has weaknesses on the light squares as you can tell rook f e1 rook f7 covering the e pawn, this is a standard. Sorry. This is a standard uh, maneuver to cover the base here. f4 was played. And bishop c6. Probably queen f3 was stronger. And after queen f2, maybe uh, queen d5 back. Well, and if queen d2, the pawn is hanging, so if b3, then bishop c6 here looks very strong. King f1 is the only move, and uh, well, maybe even queen d3, queen d5. 
So we black has the has the control of the position here. Let's we could have played queen um bishop c6 instead of queen c6. Uh in sh instead of queen f3, sorry. B3. So this bishop is attacking air. Queen c8. Well, this is obvious. Rook c4, bishop b7. Maybe thinking about something like this. Um, h4 by white. Queen h3 and queen h2. Queen g4. Well, uh, I've shown you one of my own games in the Leningrad bird, having the white pieces. There I played this idea as well. Um, let's go back. Queen h3, and after the opponent wants an exchange, I drop back with the net effect that the queen is gone from the, cent from the, from the center to a poor square. And my queen looks my queen looks nice. Queen f2, bishop d5, attacking the rook. And now, what to play? Well, you can push the e pawn, or you can open up this way. Well, it's not that clear. The engines like to play e5 here. And after king h2, you see there's a pin. Takes, takes, bishop e5. This looks very strong. And after uh, rook f1 and bishop e4 attacking the rook, rook d2 and d5, now you see black managed to give this pawn or exchange it to weaken this pawns centralize the pieces and gain space <coughs> in the center and these pawns look rather static because they don't have any uh, way to um, activate themselves easily let's go back to this position e5 would be a move here h6 by Vesikov. King h2 again, g5, bishop c1, w white is waiting simply, takes, takes, and king f1. Of course, we don't want the rook here when our king and queen is on the same file. Rook g1, queen f5, bishop b2, takes, takes, and now we uh, win a pawn and now you see white has two rooks and black for the exchange has uh, these nice extra pawns connected in the center and uh, well the position is rather equal but it's not drawish at all king g3 check and now we cover the bases here. King g3, king e8, rook f2. We don't want to exchange here because that would increase the rook's activity in a position to this light piece. So rook e6, rook f4, rook e2 attacking the pawn, rook a4, check, check and rook h3. So if this pawn falls, then this pawn falls. Rook g4 to uh, keep the h4 covered, uh, h4 pawn covered, h5, rook f4, and king d7. Now the pawn can be taken in safety, king e6, and king e5 attacking the rook and now you see after e6 
this pawn is under pressure and black gets his uh, pawns uh, rolling here check b4 this is taken takes takes and d5 well this looks like a very strong position for black here the bishop is really a stronghold here in the center and uh, restricting the rook's uh, activities uh, activity a4 check h4 as you can tell this uh, pawn here is on the <laughs> wrong side because of this bishop looking indirectly to the queening square rook b8 d4 and rook h8 was played what if a5 then uh, rook h rook a1 queen a, uh, rook h8 d3 attacking the rook and check and rook um pawn to d2 rook d1 h3 this pawn is immune due to check and winning the rook but d2 can be taken but now a5 can be taken and still the pawn is um, immune here But in this position, white went rook h8 instead of pushing his pawn. d3, rook e1, check, check, king d4. Now look at this control. Nice. Check, takes check h3 well I think this is a winning position for uh, black already um, what if rook here well then we can threaten mate simply and this uh, bishop is immune due to mate if check bishop c4 and well if rook here then it's mate so white can sacrifice the exchange but still um, this looks really dangerous if uh, threatening mate here again king before and white is simply winning the second pawn uh, or threatening to play rook g2 h2 check and queens so let's go back to this position this is why this bishop isn't ha uh, haunted rook h6 was played Queen, uh, king c3 check again mate was threatened Ship c4 and now the sacrifice the other way takes a5 check uh, h2 a6 and rook a6 is the winning move here this pawn cannot be taken because of check takes and afterwards back to stop the pawn from queening a7 was played takes and still the pawn is immune check was played takes check ch uh, and not check sorry uh, after check and king let's go back after king e2 not check of course uh, but rook a1 because we want to queen and this pawn is still immune to the king's to due to the king's position and how did black win the game 
he won the game because of his central battle of the um, of the pawns um the f uh, pawn openings such as the um the dutch or if we play vice versa for white is to battle um for the central squares with the um pawns which uh, control the center but they are not in the center and this is how to activate these pawns later on so this is why these openings are reactive openings we react to the white or, uh, or to the opponent um, in the most uh, appropriate manner after the opponent uh, made uh, concessions in the center and this is why we learn a lot of um, precise play in chess when we um, employ these openings because let's just drop back here to such a position this is not the game position but my recommendate uh, recommended position and you see that such a play is absolute absolutely um, theoretically um, sound and such a position with a5 as well but you saw that um, black played this maybe to not allow <laughs> to white to make a draw but white is the one who wants to win and if um, black um, or white has nothing better than a, a draw then it's okay for us and with this method which Vasyukov employed we um, we get a more unbalanced position uh, where it's maybe more difficult to draw keeping this uh, pawns at home for the moment and you can choose between my recommendation of uh, let's go back c6 in this position d5 and e5 or as he played Vesikov played d5 and a5 playing knight a6 controlling these dark squares okay i hope you liked the video please subscribe comment and like if you did see you next time